All right, we should be live, hopefully. So I'll wait and see if anybody shows up here, and then we'll get going here. So my name is Adam Starseed Bay. Uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, uh, just type in Adam Starseed Bay, and then you'll find my site on there. Uh, definitely subscribe, turn on notifications. I talk about many different things from spirituality uh, to stuff that's going on in the world, as well as just... Um, learning about uh, research you know research is key in everything you know no matter what we look into we observe um, uh, we question it's important to do research at the end of the day so um, that's what I bring on YouTube um, you can also check me out at facebook.com slash real talk Adam Sarseed Bay uh, definitely like the page share it out um, that's my main page right now that you can get a hold of me um, and then we'll continue for it. So yeah, and that's where I post all my live videos and blogs and so on and so forth. I'm also on the FringeRadioNetwork.com, so definitely check the page out. It's ran by uh, the Iron Show, Johnny Iron. So definitely check out FringeRadioNetwork.com. So today's gonna be interesting. Um, I was really gonna be talking about something else, but this popped up, and I was like, oh, this is a good good read. So we're gonna be reading through Isaiah 40. Um, and basically, it's just uh, about comforting the people or letting those who are well aware that they are a child of God, you know, that to not be discouraged by the ways of the world and the politics of the world and the, the, the wrongfulness that we are seeing unfold, right? You know, I always tell people that the world is ran by mafia. And it's very true, you know, everything is ran in the process of money, power, fame, um, you know, fortune and things of that nature, right? You know, we have this dominating structure that makes the little people, right? You know, the people that are in power try to make sure that those who don't have money, who don't have wealth or own land or things like that, they're small. They can be. Uh, uh, they can be overlooked. They're not important. They don't matter. The small people don't matter, right? You know that's the mentality that these world leaders have created for the world, and this goes in a lot of things, from politics to religion itself, right? You know, religion got turned into a business and a way to enslave the people. Um, in a different realm of of business right of making money and profits for the cities right you do research on the churches and the churches did exactly do that they turned into a profitable organization of confusing the people to give out their money to pay the city or the king of that city so which is why we have churches in every city and town so on and so forth because the main priority of churches was to pay off the leaders of the towns and cities so that's something that you can definitely do research on as well so um, this is going to be about not to get discouraged right you know at the end of the day we have something that no person can ever get a hold of period they can never get a hold of and that is your soul that is your essence that is you your creativity your inspiration that you can bring to the world whether you're aware of it or not um, your ideas do matter in a lot of ways and can help change and shape the way the world can be and um, and we have to learn to um, come together we have to come together. We got to get rid of these titles of of dividing each other, right? You know, putting titles on everybody that we can only hang out with a certain crowd because of the title or the or the wavelength um, of that tribe, right? We have to become mature and start bringing diversity into all these tribes and uniting together as one single unit and running the world the way it's supposed to be ran in unity um, in 
building the earth, shaping the earth, um, allowing the earth to grow, right? Nature, becoming one with nature again. That's what we have to get back into, right? We don't need this, the tallest building in a city or the, the wealthiest person is going to help change the world. No, you know, money is an illusion. Uh, titles of being the strongest person or the the king of the world it's all just illusions at the end of the day so we have to educate ourselves and realize you know that we are all true kings and queens at the end of the day those who follow universal laws and um, just become one with nature become one with the divine creator right um, become one with your soul gaining back your birthright which is what I've been talking about throughout the videos is gaining back your birthright is gaining back your soul um, which goes into the Christ character which Christ translates into the anointing anointing your soul again reawakening your soul and remembering um, that you are a part in a piece of the divine creator and we all have a purpose and a reason of being here to help change and shape the world from what we see today so there's a lot of different things we talk about but um, that's pretty much the gist of what we're going to be reading in about in Isaiah 40 so I'm gonna go ahead and start reading it and um, we'll talk about it as we go through here because again there's hidden words um, or meanings behind the words throughout the Bible uh, so we just have to to educate ourselves when reading the Bible not just for what it is but reading it for what it was intended for of who it was intended for at the end of the day so yeah, let's go ahead and get started here so Isaiah 40 comfort comfort my people says your creator speak comfortably to Jer Jerusalem or speak comfortably to the cities and bring peace to the cities and bring peace and cry unto them it says her but I'm gonna say them because it makes more sense um, because to me personally and I'll get this out of the way right now is that it just seems like throughout the Bible it always it always says her like her immorality her sin right you know this goes back to Genesis and talking about Eve right um, it just it, it tarnishes the beauty of a woman a beauty of a queen that is needed within our life you know the beauty of the mother that gives us life right um, so when it says her we got to read into it deeper you know we got to read into it that it's it's the immoralities of humans who lack the knowledge of wisdom of the soul and who lack the knowledge and wisdom of uh, of coming together at the end of the day so I'm going to be reading it as them not her so and that's something that you can do research on pray and meditate about it as well so speak comfort comfortably to Jerusalem the city of peace and cry unto them that their warfare is accomplished that their in in curity or um, excuse me here their grossly immoral unfair behavior is pardoned for they have received of the Lord's hand double of their sins they have received the curses double of their immoral actions the voice of him that cries in the wilderness or the voice of them that cries in the wilderness prepare the way of the Most High, prepare the way of the Creator, Christ. Make straight in the desert a highway for your Creator or for Christ. Allow that light to to be awakened within you, right? To be awakened within you, because only you can discover that light within you. Um, that's where you look into the term of the desert, which means that when you go through meditation, you travel through the desert at the end of the day. So pretty cool stuff. Discovering the sun within you. That's what I I like to use that analogy. Discovering the sun within you. 
Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the rough places plain. You know, and that's just when you discover um, that anointing your soul, Christ within you, um, things begin to look a lot more clear, right? You know, you can see over the mountains. You can see the the straight road that used to be crooked at one time. Um, you used to look at the ground all the time, but you always, or looked up in the sky for signs and wonders. But now you can see straight ahead and know your destination, know your pinpoint in life. Um, and that's just the power of looking within yourself and reuniting yourself with your soul, your birthright, and having Christ as your guide at the end of the day. It's beautiful stuff, man. And the glory of the Creator shall be revealed, or the glory of Christ shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Creator has spoken it. For the mouth, or, or the mouth of I am has spoken it, right? Because we can all speak one. We can all speak one in unity. You know, and that's just discovering your birthright at the end of the day. You know, living by your soul, living by your heart, and not the ways of the world. You live by the ways of the world, you live in the world of Babylon, the state of confusion, where everybody thinks that they are their own individual God, right? They use their image, and they think that they are God controlling and running people, or they feel that they are the God of confusion, or the God of doubt, um, they've created these uh, deities within their lives, so there's no, there's no um, oneness or connection with anything because they fell short into their image um, instead of looking to their birthright, which is their soul at the end of the day. So um, let's see here. The voice said. And this is interesting, and oh, it just keeps saying the voice, right? That voice, that hidden voice within you, right? You know, that that can give you guidance, knowledge, and wisdom. You know, like, uh, you know, you hear that voice saying, hey, you shouldn't go to that party. And then you go to that party, and then you you regret going to that party. You're like, man, I should have heard, listened to that voice that said I shouldn't have went. Then I went and went through the circumstances and situations that I just went through. So that hidden voice is something that's very important. And realizing that that voice is is a single voice, not a voice of many, right? Because a voice of many will confuse you. Say, hey, you need to go do this. Hey, you should go do this. Or this and this and this and this. Or, hey, you need to follow me. You need to follow this voice and listen to what I tell you to do, right? You know, those are voices you don't want to listen to. But if that voice says, hey, maybe you shouldn't go that way. Maybe you should step back, look and observe at your life and just think about uh, the situation you're getting yourself into and think about what you are going to do in those situations you know um, going back into the I am at the end of the day um, not making any rational decisions but making mature decisions right you know and that's just something we all learn right sometimes we have to fail or fall um, to learn from our mistakes uh, to learn from our mistakes. And that's so very important at the end of the day. Um, the voice said, cry. And they said, what shall I cry? All flesh, all flesh is grass. And all the goodliness, therefore, is as the flower of the fields. What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness, therefore, is as the flowers of the field, right? The flowers of the field. That's, whoo, that's, that's powerful right there. I don't really know how to really interpret that. But I mean, if all flesh is grass, right? If all flesh is grass, then that means, you know, that grass can grow tall. Um, and as it grows tall, you have to be able to, to see through, right? Or your whole... Your whole land will be congested with grass and you won't be able to work or maneuver. So you gotta mow the grass down, right? You gotta clean yourself, you gotta check yourself, um, and make sure that things are presented in a beautiful nature, not 
not where you're having to dig through everything. If your grass is tall, you lose your keys in the grass, you ain't never going to find your keys. But if you're mowing and keeping your, um, your fields clean, you're going to be able to find it right away. You'll be like, oh, hey, there's my keys right there. So um, I think it's just maintaining your body, maintaining your structure, knowing who you are um, and uh, what you present to the world, right? And then it, here it says, you know, that uh, goodliness is as the flower of the field. Goodliness is as the flowers of the field, right? You know, you can have flowers, you can have a field of flowers, but sometimes you'll just see this certain flower that's just beautiful, right? That just sticks out among the fields, right and that can be that representation of your soul or of you that that you are beauty at the end of the day you just have to realize it and discover it right because you don't know with the flower you don't know if it's beautiful or not until it blooms and blossoms right when that flower blooms and blossoms then we see the true beauty of it you know and that's what each of us can be you know we are all beautiful at the end of the day we just have to be able to grow and blossom into our true potentials it's a beautiful stuff man let's see uh, the grass withers and the flowers fade because the spirit of nature or the spirit of the creator blows upon it surely the people is grass surely the people is grass which means, you know, just like the air, we can't see the air, but we see the effects of the air, right? You know, um, the effects of its destruction, the effects of beauty, spreading seeds, right? You know, because the wind can spread seeds from trees and then plant more trees and things like that. You know, the air also, or it can also plant weeds as well. Um, so the power of air is a good representation of of the unseen right you know we can't see god we can't see the creator but we feel the creator we can't see christ we've heard of christ and the story of christ but we can feel christ we can be awakened spiritually from christ so that's what we have to look at is that that we need to quit looking outside ourselves for the glory of of god or the glory of the most high when it's always been in here through feeling, through self-discovery, and going back into that desert within you through praying and meditation. Beautiful stuff. Uh, let's see here. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Creator, or the I Am, shall stand forever. But the words of the Creator, or Christ, shall stand forever. You know, and it just means that with the power of words, we got to re-educate ourselves. What does the word mean, right? You know, um, we've been conditioned to think that the Bible is the word, right? But the power of words is the power of magic. So everything that we speak, we speak and it shall be, right? Abracadabra, I create what I speak. I create what I speak. So if you want to live through hell, then you'll live through hell. If you want to live through heaven, you'll live through heaven. If you want to live in the borderlines of heaven and hell, you'll live in that format as well, right? You know, the power of choice, the power of words, um, the power of your imagination, your magi nation, right? We are a nation of magis. We all are. We're all a nation of magis. We all create magic spells for ourselves and onto others, right? We create curses onto others and we create curses to ourselves. You know, again, abracadabra, we create what we speak. So you get to choose if you want to live in hell or if you want to live in heaven. The power of choice. And that's something that comes with maturity. And that's something that you have to create a foundational structure with. Which, again, like I said, Christ is the best foundation uh, to help you be guided on your path. Um, whether it be a spiritual journey or discovering that spiritual journey because that spiritual journey is always a part of your life it's just your choice on how deep you want to go into that spiritual journey or how much or how ignorant I think that's a good word ignorant how ignorant are you going to be to avoid the spiritual journey right to avoid what is calling you right you know you want to have peace in your life but you keep avoiding 
the road that's already there for you that spiritual journey right you know that that path that leads back to your soul at the end of the day so oh, that's beautiful man beautiful stuff all right so it says here oh zion which means the highest point and make sure i got that right get my little cheat sheet here again let's see here Yep, the highest point. So, O Zion, or the highest point, that bringeth good tidings. Get up into the high mountains, O Jerusalem, the city of peace. Right? Those who want to have peace in their life, right? Um, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up the voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, and I wrote this down today. Say unto the cities with praise, right? Don't look at the word Judah, but the representation of Judah, which means praise. You know, be joyful uh, uh, of the, or behold, right? It says on here, behold your God, or behold the Creator, or behold the I Am. Behold the power of Christ within you, right? So let me read that again, because this is powerful. O Zion, the highest point, that bring good tidings, Get up into the high mountains, the high mountains, O Jerusalem, which is the city that brings peace, that brings good tidings. Lift up the voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities and of praise, or praise unto the cities, and behold your God. Behold your Creator. Behold the I Am right the I am um, within you right there can be peace within you you know there can there should be praising there should be uh, a multitude of people saying yes I have discovered the city of peace within me I've discovered Jerusalem within me and you can experience the city of Jerusalem within you too would you like to experience that city of peace would you like to experience Christ's light within you? Would you like to be able to praise the goodness within you? Do you want to discover that within you? Right? And then that's the power of choice. Are the people going to want to experience peace in their lives? Are they willing to go through the trials and the tests and the schooling of a spiritual journey? Right? Of a spiritual journey. Or are they going to still be fools and be ignorant in their own immoral judgment, their gross behaviors, and continue to push away that spiritual journey or push away that light within them at the end of the day? And that's beautiful. And that's, 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 uh, I don't know what that word would be, but that's just a realization, right? You know, that everybody's waiting for the city of Jerusalem to come down. The city of peace to come down but at the end of the day as within so without Jerusalem the city of peace is in you and you yourself have to bring that city of peace outside yourself you need to speak it through your words on what you want in this city of peace that is to come right so that is being formed today whoo that is powerful man so just realize that, right? You know, we got to get out of our mindset that this Bible is talking about the Middle East and talking about Jerusalem and things like that. No, that's the distraction. That is the distraction that they keep pulling you to consistently, right? Christ did not come down here. <laughs> Christ did not come down here to say, hey, all the magic is over here in the Middle East. Who cares about the rest of the world? All the magics in the Middle East. No, he never came down here and he never said that. He just said, go within yourself. Discover heaven within you, right? I am the way, truth, and life. No one goes to the Father except through me. I am. I am. Say that to yourself. I am is within you. The desert is within you. You confront Satan, your adversary, within you, right? All these beings, all these hosts within you, doubt and anger and uh, bitterness and all this stuff is in you and you have to 
you have to balance that out within you you have to discover that light within you and you have to discover that city of peace within you which is that city of Jerusalem that everybody wants but they are consistently waiting for the signs and wonders outside themselves when at the end of the day you had the key to the city of Jerusalem within you you had that all along because but because of your ignorance and your selfish desires to wait for all these signs and wonders you miss your opportunity you miss your opportunity you never picked up that key and you never open up that doorway to see where that city of Jerusalem would lead you you push that spiritual journey aside so it's you yourself that makes that decision at the end of the day no human no church is ever going to be able to give you that true key to the city of Jerusalem because that true key is you that city of Jerusalem is within you that new Jerusalem that everybody wants the city of peace is in you and you have to open up that doorway you need to be creative you need to be the one that brings peace to the generations to come which is unfolding every single day so that's powerful and that's you need to check yourself and realize that the city of peace Jerusalem is in you not outside you not the Middle East that's a distraction that is a distraction so that's powerful Alrighty then. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Where was I? Let's see. Behold, the authority, the creator, will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for them. Behold, his reward is with them, and his work before them. Again, behold, the authority, the creator, Christ, will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him for them behold his reward is with them and his work before them the creator's divine work and purpose for you is in you it is in you not outside you in you in you you got to realize that he shall feed his flocks like a shepherd he shall gather the lambs those who are innocent with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young he shall gently lead those that are with young right you know when it's just realizing you know that that through the trials and tribulations in life right um there can be there can be those who are so innocent in life right just like a child and um, when chaos happens or chaos comes into one's life, you know, they don't know where to go. They don't know who to turn to, right? They're looking for a shepherd, someone to guide them in the right direction, right? You know, and that's the, the, the purpose of certain individuals, right? You know, that we have the power of leadership, right? You know, this is something that I'm learning every day, you know, that not everybody is made to be a leader, uh, me personally, I still, I still um, want you guys to become your leaders in your life. But I think sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone, realize that we are a leader, and that we do have a more important role as leaders to lead people in the right direction, right? You know, because people have been led astray in so many different ways, be it through churches or through. Um, uh, black magic and the the cults of of um, outside uh, rituals right through sacrifices and um, using magic in the wrong way right you know people get led astray all over the place so if you discover you're a leader it is your responsibility to to help those along their path as well to help awaken them don't tell them what to do but you're supposed to just say, hey, if you would like to experience a spiritual journey, well, let's sit down and talk about it. Hey, would you like to experience the light of Christ within you? Hey, how's it going, Karen? Um, then sit down and let's discuss this together, right? you got to, when you're the leader and you're leading people, you got to realize that you're going to have an influence on them. And maturity is key 
through this, right? You share your testimonies and that's going to be an inspiration. The next step is realizing that these people have their own testimonies, but some are scared. Some don't know how to handle it and some don't even know what a spiritual journey is. A lot of people don't know how to pray or meditate. That still astonishes me every day when I see comments saying, well, I don't know how to pray and meditate. What am I looking for when I'm praying and meditate? That breaks my heart at the end of the day because they don't know. They don't know at all. They don't know at all. So that's up to us who have a strong foundation with Christ to be that guiding light, but not pushing stuff down their throat. Say, hey, you need to read your Bible and do this, 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 that. No, no, you have to be real. You have to be authentic and you have to sit down with them side by side. Not in front of them, not behind them, but side by side as an equal. And you know where they have been, right? Because you've been in their shoes before. You question God. You question Christ. You question why your life was hell, right? You know, we've been through that as well. But we discover that light of Christ. And that's our job to, to share that with everybody else. Again... Jerusalem translates city of peace that new Jerusalem is us it is within us and we have to bring that discovery of Jerusalem within us and bring it outside to help people discover the city of peace within them so that's powerful man it really is Whew. almost teared up there <laughs> all right um let's see here now I lost my train of thought here here we go all right so who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth? Ooh, that's a good one. And comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scale and the hills in a balance. And the hills in a balance. This is a good one. This is a parable right here. And this is something that you have to look deeper in question you know what is the earth what is the dirt what is the air what are the stars um what is christ what is god was the creator what created all life what created all existence right what created all existence we have to ask these questions and we have to do that self-discovery that research and look into it a lot of people just overlook it oh look at those animals whatever you know you got People who hunt for uh, for pleasure, right? Um, but not realizing that those animals are souls, they're beings, they're entities, right? That are just playing in nature, right? They're praying in nature. And then they get preyed on. And then they get um, killed because of sport, right? You know, and, and that can lead to a lot of different conversations, right? Because back in the day... We used to live in a wilderness where there was no, um, where there was no crops, and this where you do research and just learn about the cultures, right? The native cultures of life and how they, how they prayed over the animal that was going to feed them, right? You know, they they did a soul, a soul prayer to send that soul away peacefully back into the ethers right they respected that animal they realized it was an entity and a being and they thanked that being for giving them nourishment right they had all of those rituals that they did before they ate it it wasn't just bang dead and then they just chowed it down like some cave people no they was very mature very respectful um, at the end of the day so we have to realize that maturity is key and that everything matters at the end of the day trees are a huge important factor on this world right now right we have an amazon um i haven't looked too much into it. i just been hearing consistently about it um and we got to pray about it is that the rainforest is on fire the amazon rainforest is on fire right now and that's that's horrible that's that's not good at all right but if we were all if humanity was unity in one they'd be like oh my gosh the the rainforest is on fire we need to go take cover right now there's nobody acting upon it because of their selfish greed and desires to rule certain parts of the world that is just stupid 
right? That is ignorant and stupid. The whole world should be panicking, going, oh my gosh, the Amazon forest is dying. We need to save it, right? That is like one of the last areas of beauty in nature. And it's it just shows the ignorant and stupidity of the leaders that we have on the world right now. It's just insane. So again, pray for the rainforest that the fires will participate and that they will go away and that the Amazon rainforest will blossom and grow back to the way it's supposed to be. I don't know how bad it is, but I have heard it's been pretty bad and it's been going on for days now. So um, definitely not good. But we got to realize that that's the world we live in now is greed, ignorance, immorality, and so on and so forth. And we got to be that change. We got to be that city of peace, that new Jerusalem for this world right um at the end of the day we're going to see all of these leaders fall and we are the next leaders or the next agers to come to revamp the world and change the world the way it needs to be right um, and that can get deep in another story so yeah so let's continue on here um and again uh before i continue on i said that comprehending the dust of the earth um that brings me back into Genesis on right on how Adam was created from the dust of the earth, right? It's a parable again dust represents DNA it represents genetics and throughout the Bible it talks about um, The tree of life right the ancestral heritage and it talks about generations It gives names of the generations and it continues on you know um, the Bible is speaking in parables of hey You need to get back to the roots of your being which is your DNA which is your genetics, you need to fix the generational curses which have plagued humanity, which is what we see right now, the ignorance of humanity, the dividing of the state and church, right? The dividing of the soul and of human immorality. Um, and we have to just bring that all to light. We have to fix these generational curses. Right, so that is the dust of the earth. We have to fix the genetics and ancestral timeline at the end of the day. Um, so it's it gets big, man. <laughs> All right, so let's continue on. Um, I still got a long ways to read here. All right, so let's see who has directed the spirit of the authority, or being his counselor, who has taught them. Who has taught them? Again, who has directed the spirit of the authority or of Christ? Or being his counselor, who has taught them? Who has taught them at the end of the day? Who has taught them how to go back into this, into their self? Who has taught them to go and learn about meditation and praying? Who has taught them to go and learn about the Creator? Have a personal relationship with the Creator and with Christ within them? Who has taught them? Nobody. Nobody at the end of the day. Nobody has taught you nothing about the Creator. They've taught you stuff outside yourself, right? Humans have taught you stuff outside yourselves. But those who speak the words and knowledge of Christ are those that allow you to go back within you. Hey, you want to discover the light of Christ? Well, let's sit down again. Praying and meditation is your tool to discover a personal relationship with Christ and God. I can't take you there. I cannot take you there. A true leader will say, I cannot take you there. I can talk about it. I can share my testimonies about it. But I cannot take you to God. I cannot take you to Christ. Only you, yourself, can take yourself to the Creator and to Christ. You have the power to... Hold on here. I gotta plug my computer in. All right. Only you can discover the light within you to fix yourself, to heal yourself, to trust yourself. That's a key word right there. Learning how to trust my trust yourself. At the end of the day, I've read a lot of comments again of people stating they can't trust themselves. Oh, they gave their lives to Christ. Oh, they go to church every day. But they can't trust themselves. What does that say about the leaders of the world? What does that say about those who are speaking about Christ daily? And then they go home after church and then they still tell themselves they don't trust themselves. Right? 
They don't trust themselves because those leaders are not sitting down with them and saying, hey, I don't have the answers. I can't show you everything, right? All I can do is share my testimonies. You have to do the work. You got to quit being lazy and do the work. If you want to better your life, you got to do the work, right? You know, you go into the job world, right? You're lazy at work, you're going to get fired. That's it. That's just how it is. So if you're lazy in the spirit, you're going to get fired from the spirit, <laughs> right? It's not that the doorway closes. The doorway is always open. It's just because people are ignorant and self-indulged within themselves. They have all these spirits attached to them, right? The, par the spirit that doesn't trust, the spirit of doubt, the spirit of lust, the spirit of immorality. All these spirits have inhabited these people. And they don't know where to go at the end of the day, right? Again, we live in a world of a nation of magis. Nation of magic. Magic spells all over the place. And we have to stop it. <laughs> I just want to just, just say, stop it. Wake up, world. Stop it. It's just, oh man, it's just so frustrating. But it's it's so easy at the end of the day, right? That people just have to sit down. It's just we have to find leaders that know what they're talking about. At the end of the day, it's it's sitting down with them and and guiding them on the right path, giving them the tools. Hey, you want to learn about praying and meditation? All right, let's sit down and let's find out what works for you. Get yourself some a pen and paper and write down um, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. What did you discover through your praying session? What did you discover in your meditation session at the end of the day? So um, that's just the power of what we have to be showing people. Is that light that shines through us can shine through them. And we have to give them encouragement. Not, oh, the end of the world is coming. Or, oh, the rapture is on this day. Or, you know, God's kingdom is coming soon you know giving all of these praises and glory and making it sound good it sounds awesome right oh god is coming soon right christ is going to come and take care of all this stuff right it sounds awesome it sounds beautiful right words of encouragement but we're lying to the people at the end of the day i fell for it a lot of other people fall for it right city of peace is in here the new jerusalem is in here that jerusalem that is coming down is not coming down from outside it's coming up through us that new Jerusalem is us and for those who are the true children of the Most High they're going to give you that city of Jerusalem that city of peace and speak it through their words right the power of words the power of words listen to what's being said if they're telling you what to do that's not it but if they're if they're leading you to a place that allows you to develop you and allows you to grow you then that's a good leader right because it's self-development just like in the workplace again you can't just just hire somebody and then just assume they know everything they don't they have to have a guide and a leader to show them how to work everything on how this machine works or or how to talk to somebody right they have to be taught and shown right and it's up to their individual journey on what they choose to utilize with the tools that were given to them so yeah so let's continue on here <laughs> all right let's see here uh, behold the nations are as a dr uh, drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance behold they take up the aisles as a very little thing they take up the aisles of a very little thing right at the end of the day it's just a lack of knowledge and wisdom people don't know what they're looking for they don't know where to go right you know they're they're just laying on the ground slithering on the ground and they're just they're intaking all the dust and they just don't know where to go after that Yes, I know. You gotta wait. I'm sorry. All right, my kids are yelling at me. It's dinner time, so I gotta hurry up here. <laughs> Alrighty, and um, this was an interesting one. Um, this word Li Lebanon, 
um, which translates into white or pure. Um, I really had a hard time really kind of distinguishing what this means and I did have a revelation of it but I forgot it so um, I'm going to go ahead and just just read through this and then go from there but it says and Lebanon or and the white or pale is not sufficient to burn right um, and that's that's what it was that's what I came came across right white is a representation of what like white hair um, and what is white hair um, presented as knowledge and wisdom right the elderly the elders right they're known as knowledge and wisdom so it would be outside the knowledge and wisdom so and the knowledge and wisdom of the world is not sufficient to burn right it's not a, a good sacrifice it's not good nourishment for the soul nor the beast therefore sufficient for a burnt offering and the beast again is not just animals but it's humans as well it is not sufficient for a birth offering meaning meaning knowledge and wisdom of the earth and sacrifices of the earth have no meaning to the Creator it has no meaning to discovering your birthright your soul it has no meaning at all it has no meaning humanity has given it a meaning but it has no meaning it is leading people astray again and thinking that they can obtain the glory of the Creator they think that they can obtain the glory of Christ through sacrifice but at the end of the day it's not and you can talk about all this knowledge and wisdom like I said is you can speak knowledge and wisdom but it is the personal journey at the end of the day and good leaders will say hey if you want to discover Christ this is the tools you need to look into at the end of the day not not praise be to God and God will save you at the end of the day right you gotta be mature minded you gotta think of the way of the world we live in now praying and meditation has always been the key to discovering the creator within you at the end of the day it is very true and the reason why I'm saying at the end of the day um, it's it's important to realize what that means and then I'll get back here at the end of days at the end of days which means as the sun rises and we see the beauty of the sun as the sun nurtures the world and allows plants to grow and things like that eventually the beauty and growth of the sun will fade down and then we will be and that will be the end of the day right and then the night will rise up right the moon the night will rise up and we have to go and take trials and tribulations within ourselves and look deep within ourselves as we walk through the night as we walk through the darkness but never fear as the night as the day turns into night night turns into day and when the Sun arises again your life will grow and blossom again that gives me goosebumps but it's that's what the end of days is it's it's a cycle it's a cycle it's not the end of the world right it's just realizing the end of a day or the end of your life here right right people humanity fears death right they think that this body is them and it's not there's a soul within you that continues on right that continues on and even when this body fades each day and it fades away into the ground or however you get rid of your body right you go back into the ethers you go back into the creator you go back into the energy right and it's just a consistent cycle right and it's it's just like uh, the Lion King for example the circle of life right you know as babies are grow animals die right and when animals die other animals will will ingest their carcass and their carcass will remain but it will fade back into the ground and give nourishment to the ground right the cycle of life so we have to realize that our cycle of life is the same way that we go through trials and tribulations and that we can discover the Sun within our lives right and we'll still go through the nightly sky 
our night selves the darkness within us but we will always have that sun to look forward to the next day whether it be the next day on this world or the next day after this life right it's it's just encouraging words right you have to give people that right the churches do not teach you that <laughs> that that death is a beautiful thing back in the day right they had huge celebrations when people would pass when their family members passed it would it was because it was encouragement of lifting the soul uplifting the soul right it's complicated right but um it's all energy it's all synergy right you got to look at the the elementals that surround us all of these beings that surround us consistently right we're never alone here at all we always have beings that watch and protect us and guide us through life um and it works in that same manner is that the soul is a energy conduit and we have energy as well and we can feed energy so we want to help elevate the soul that just left that body and elevate it wherever it needs to go elevate it back through the ethers or however it works all right i don't have all the answers but all i know is that back in the ancestors days it was a celebration of uplifting the soul and sending it back to the ethers or the creator whatever it may be so we have to change that mentality there's no such thing as death at the end of the day we have nothing to fear it should be a celebration it's sad when people pass but it should be a celebration of like hey they moved on to their next life right and we are all one and connected um, this goes into Transformers uh, um, when they created the Matrix in the old 80s cartoon and uh, they really started talking real heavily about it I know this is getting off topic here but uh, in Beast Wars Transformers they talked real heavily about the Matrix structure and how the soul worked um, with them but it spoke to me because you know at the end of the day right we think we're individual souls and we think that we're separated because that's what we're taught that we're separated from the creator but at the end of the day we really are never separated we're just we're just a piece of experiencing life of the creator and then we go back to the creator so in beast wars they would always say if a transformer passed away um they went back to the prime spark which would be the source they all were united again right they were all united and we have to realize that that we will be united with everyone at the end of the day with the divine creator right um with all these experiences that we had and things like that so you know it's encouraging we have to send encouragement <laughs> that even through death right that there's still life always is life that book of life is continuously open there is no death the only death that you'll experience is the ignorance and the immorality um, that someone causes within their own life. Um, and that's just a mindset, not the way in how the world really works and not the way in how the spirit world works. So, beautiful stuff, man. I'm talking a lot. Now it's already almost an hour. Woo! But that's the power of the spirit, right? You know, is you just have to... When you discover that light of Christ within you, you just let it share it out. You just let that light share it out. And whatever is meant to be said will be said, you know, and that's where you don't fear what's going to be said, right? You know, and it, it comes with maturity, right? It took me a while to to uh, be able to present stuff uh, through these video formats. But throughout the years, you be it to be, you, you as you grow with Christ in your life and you begin to uh, gain maturity and just uh, knowledge on how to utilize the technology we have um, you can build upon it and you can just allow things to just flow like water at the end of the day so it's beautiful stuff it really is so anyways let's continue on here hopefully if I didn't lose my okay so to whom then will will be like God or what likeness will you compare unto them? And this is a big one. This is what we just talked about. To whom then will be like God? Or what likeness will where what la 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 la? And what likeness can we compare unto them? What likeness can we compare unto them? Um, and then a parable goes on again because like you know 
so many humans still are trying to discover God and Christ outside themselves, right? They're asking these leaders these questions. And they're just, all these false prophets are leading people astray. So again, been talking about it through the whole video. It's just a true leader will sit down and talk with them and give them the tools they need to discover things for themselves. So, um, so then we got a parable here. So the workman melts a grieving image or creates an image and the goldsmith, goldsmith spreads it over with gold and casts silver chains on it. They that is so improver, uh, impro, 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 I don't know that word. I hate big words. Um, that they have no ob, oblation choi, choices, a tree that will not rot. Okay, let me reread this here. So basic meaning is that people have a choice. That they can either choose to have a root that doesn't rot or they can choose to have a root that does rot at the end of the day the power of choice a growing root or a non-growing root those that seek unto them uh, unto him or the creator a cunning workman to prepare an image shall not be moved shall not be moved so again you know if you're looking outside yourself, you're looking at all these images. Again, and I can't stress this enough, right? The churches have created a Jesus Christ as an idol. They created an actual idol. No matter what church you go into, they have an idol of a character. And they name that that character, that idol, Christ, right? An outside self, right? And they've created a Mary idol. They've created all these idols, right? Even the... Even the characters in the Bible are also idols, right? You got Peter and Paul, and then you got the archangel, Raphael, Michael, right? You know, it's people have created these idols. Be like, oh, I talked to Archangel Michael. Oh, I talked to, to Enoch or something like that, right? It's cool if the spirit gives itself a name. Uh, usually... If you do research on people's testimonies, it's really not that the spirit gave its name. It's that the person sensed that it was the spirit. Um, all I can do is just say my personal observation of it. My personal encounters with spirits is that they really have no name because they're all one entity, right? They may seem separate, but it's because each entity is bringing something to you. Each spirit is bringing something to you that you need to heal or fix in your life um, or is guiding you to that, right? So it's maturity of realizing what the spirits are bringing to you. Um, again, people, the new age concept, um, whatever it is, you know, people feel that they have these spirits have names but it's not that they have names it's that humans have given them names and if it helps them that's awesome right Raphael is known as as the healer the angel of healing right so it's a good way of presenting that energy out there of hey I was visited by Raphael he gave me healing so on and so forth right um, but you can do that with Christ right Christ is the is the one that saves the soul and things like that so it's it's again the humans give spirits names but in actuality spirits have no names they have they have titles that humans can give them as well <laughs> but again each soul has its own job um, and they're all in one unit not separate units so if there is a separate entity that is forceful and dominant usually that would be labeled a a demon energy right because you have to give it a title of some kind and those demon energies is something that you have to to um, let it know that it's not in control even though it will tell you it's in control it's not in control any demon element which would be like self-doubt or anger or rage or whatever it is that's trying to torment you 
it has no power it can talk big but that spirit has no power so we have to realize and look at spirits differently and and stop naming them and know what they are feel that energy out right if you have to give that spirit a name great if it helps people on their journey great right you know the spirit of enoch whatever it is um and just realize the words behind it right i haven't wrote enoch down yet i gotta do some research on what on what the name enoch means but say like david is a good example right david has talked about a lot in the bible so david translates into beloved the beloved ones right you are beloved um so we just have to be mature and look into these manners. Not a lot of people talk like that um, because a lot of people get oohs and ahs of, oh my gosh, I saw an angel, or oh my gosh, I saw Archangel Michael, or oh my gosh, I saw uh, I saw um, Enoch or whatever it is, right? You know, the oohs and ahs of our experiences, right? I've had them myself. I've had them myself, right? I called upon, I've had this, as well where I called upon Archangel Michael when I was doing research on spirits and there was just a spirit right there <laughs> but uh, um, I called upon Archangel Michael and uh, the whole room just lit up in a blue atmosphere the energy was just blue and it just was just a huge energy rush right and it was a amazing experience it really was because i i called archangel michael so you know would that mean that that was really archangel michael or is that just a spirit that is attached to that title right um and that's something i've talked about before where we actually create entities as well we do right right because jesus christ the name doesn't exist right we the real translation Yeshua or Yeshua closer would be Joshua right um, Christ translates into the anointing um, so Jesus Christ people have prayed to it they meditated to it so they've harnessed the energy and they've created this own entity artificial entity and it has grown and blossomed and what is Jesus Christ what do people pray to for Jesus Christ for help for peace for love and guidance and every time those words go through Jesus Christ I need guidance and it grows Jesus Christ I need peace in my life and it grows Jesus Christ I need I need uh, um, helping or can you heal this person and it grows that spirit grows right that power of praying and meditation for this Jesus Christ character has created an entity and it grows and it sends the energy through the ethers so when people pray to it it's energy and it's gonna wrap itself around you as a entity because we're all hosts at the end of the day these bodies are hosts for many different spirits right you know this goes to the personas and things of that nature as well so it's just maturity a lot of people don't talk about it um, I can only share my experiences with the spirits from what I have experienced right and I overanalyze and overthink everything um, because I don't want to be manipulated um, like other people right of worshiping these right what uh, what was uh, uh, um, oh it's not the Catholic Church it's uh, Mormons what is the foundation of Mormons it is uh oh man what is his name i don't know you if you know mormons there was this guy he discovered this angel and this angel told him uh to create the mormon bible and um that's the foundation right there right the full in, the foolishness of a human listening to an angel instead of keeping the foundational structure of the creator and christ as well right christ should be that foundation of guiding light but when you say hey i created this book from this angel um yes thank you yeah joseph smith yeah so joseph smith he had this encounter with this angel and this angel gave him the knowledge and that's how the mormon book came into play so we have to to be mindful of this test the angels it says is right in the bible 
test the angels daily also means test yourself daily test the messengers because there really is no angels or demons they're really all messengers at the end of the day the real translation messengers um, the seraphim the cherubim so on and so forth you know we got to do the research and self-exploration because again people get oohs and ahs of oh my gosh I was visited by Jesus Christ I got to go share that right um, but at the end of the day um, a lot of testimonies that I've seen is that if people are visited by a Christ character it usually says hey I am here my child I am here it doesn't say Jesus Christ <laughs> it says I am and then if you go in there it says I am the way truth and life no one goes to the father and then Moses also said hey what am I supposed to tell them your name it says I am what I am right Christ or Yahuwah right translates it into I am what I am or the self-existing one so um, we just have to look at that right we just have to educate people educate ourselves and to what these messengers are bringing to us and not be at oohs and ahs because of our our uh, magic eye or our third eye is showing this stuff because spirits have no form at the end of the day and that's what I learned and discovered is that spirits have no form the only form that they get is what we give them again the only form that spirits get is what we give them so um, if an entity is of a negative element or rageful element it's going to go into the database oh well this person uh, looks at a rage or a demon with horns and and uh, teeth and red okay I'm gonna present myself as that and then they can deal with it in that term so um, that's what people have to look at right the power of this right here the imagination um, is key not everything is imagination but it's it's the only only way of explaining your experience at the end of the day right um, because we all have these spiritual encounters we're all visited by these spirits but we have to be able to look at what it is and what it's doing for us at the end of the day so <laughs> it's it's quite it's hard to explain but I think people really need to be mature about it so then everybody can understand it because otherwise a lot of people get frustrated they're like well I want to be visited by Enoch well I want to be visited by Archangel Michael I want to have the same encounter that Adam had with Archangel Michael right people create expectations because of people's testimonies but if you give them a realistic perception of hey this was my encounter you are not going to have the same encounter I had because your experience is made for you spirits have no form you will give that spirit form so you have to realize that as well so it's just it, it's something that I feel I really need to talk about a lot more because a lot of people are not talking about it at all um, so we just got to realize that as well so again got off track but it's definitely something I need to be talked about and it's already an hour and eight minutes into this so Alrighty then. Um, let's see here. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it on that. I think that's pretty much a good stopping point, and then I'll continue on maybe a next chapter that I can go through if I don't lose my place here. <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, again, I was just sitting with Christ, just kind of seeing what needed to be talked about. A lot, obviously, need to be talked about today. Um. It's supper time. Yes, it is. My daughter is like, I'm hungry. So yeah, I need to go feed my kids too. So, uh, all right. Well, you have a good, good time with supper, Karen. Um, but uh, but at the end of the day, um, we have to be the one that wants to discover the new Jerusalem within us. We want to be the ones to bring that city of peace within our life, within our life, right? You know, I've heard the term that we are the brides of Christ, right? Which was talked about earlier about her, right? You know, we are the brides of Christ. But I think we have to start making it a little more, it makes more sense with a diverse audience because we're talking to diversity here. The world is full of diversity and the world is so divided right now. 
um, it's really hard to to um, talk to people about the light of Christ and about their their birthright, their soul, and we have to br bring that and present that the leaders of the new age, right? The next agers, right? Um, which again, next agers comes from um, Kingdom Talks. I think it's KingdomTalksMedia.com. I could be wrong on that. If you're still there, Karen, post the link so people know. Um, but um, Kingdom Talks, um, uh, Gail Hodges, he's the one that has created this concept, and I love this concept. Um, and it's it's bringing that new change um, that I've been talking about for years um, is that we got to be able to talk to to people in many different levels in many different ways. Um, so we can bring that love of Christ to people, right? It doesn't matter if you're gay or lesbian or if you're Catholic or Mormon or or uh, Buddha or whatever it is. Hey, how's it going, Helen? From the United Kingdom. Awesome. Um, no matter where you're from, right? Um, we got to let people know that the light of Christ is within us. You know, um, the Bible is a good tool. It sure is. There's a lot of awesome things in there that is a hero's journey at the end of the day it just needs to be read as that right the bible needs to be read as a hero's journey and not as a religion religious program um, that people have created throughout the centuries um, so we just have to embrace diversity um, we do and that's how you will bring people to the light of christ um, is because you're real and authentic with them you're gonna sit down with them and give them the tools they need to discover that light within them praying and meditation and then they'll ask questions well what kind of meditations do I need to partake in what kind of praying do I need to to um, experience and then you'll say well this is what I used and um, this can work for you that's where pen and paper comes in and just that personal exploration at the end of the day, right? Each person has to have that personal exploration of their spiritual journey. And that that is itself is a great way of explaining what people want to experience. It's a spiritual journey at the end of the day, right? You know, a spiritual journey just means you're going into the spirit realm. And the goal in that spiritual journey or that spiritual realm is to discover that sun in that spiritual realm, right? Because you are going to be surrounded by darkness. Darkness isn't hell and fire and brimstone, right? Darkness is just the unknown, right? The unknown. It is uncharted grounds that you haven't explored, right? So you got to get your lantern and you got to have that guiding light through the caves through the darkness and start shining the light on what is unseen in your life and eventually as you explore deeper and deeper within yourself learning how to conquer your demons within you and learn more about the I am self learn about the Creator you're going to discover that light within there which can be labeled Christ within you which is in turn your soul your birthright that you reclaim that you get anointed and claim back and then you're whole again right that Christ light makes you whole again so and that's that's just an easy way of of um, letting people know what they're getting into and what the the goal is on a spiritual journey is discovering that light your soul your birthright at the end of the day and you want to grab hold of it and you want to hug it and go Ah, I'm home again, finally. I've claimed back my birthright. I'm back. I understand now the Creator. I understand now my purpose. I understand now my reasons for being here. I understand now. I can commune again. I can go into that sacred place. I can commune with the Creator and with Christ to help me with guidance uh, for what I need to, to um, create in this new Jerusalem or in this city of peace that we are creating right now so um, reclaim back your birthright your soul is the in game on a spiritual journey at the end of the day so yeah I could keep talking on and on and on so I'm gonna go ahead and end on that so thank you all for joining me in chat room appreciate it love yourself 
keep shining bright. Um, again, if you're watching me on YouTube, uh, just type in Adam Starseed Bay, subscribe, turn on notifications, share the page out. Um, I'm also on Facebook.com slash Real Talk Adam Starseed Bay. Uh, like the page, share it out. Um, if you got any questions, concerns, that's the page to get a hold of me. I share a lot of my live videos and blogs on that site as well. Um, you, should, you can also check out the FringeRadioNetwork.com. I'm on there um, as well. So definitely check that out. So yeah, so at the end of the day, love yourself. Keep shining bright. You make the choices in your life. If you choose to discover the city of peace, it is already there for you. You just got to pick up that key, the key to the new Jerusalem. You just got to pick it up and open it and adventure into that city of peace. And once you discover that city of peace and that light of Christ within you, then you adventure out. And you start telling people about the good news, right? About the good news. It's always about the good news at the end of the day. There is no bad news at all, right? Those who claim to be the followers of Christ and those who claim to have the words of God will never spread bad news, right? Those who claim the end of the world's coming and the rapture is coming and this date's here, prepare yourself, blah, 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 blah. False prophets. False prophets at the end of the day, right? The city of peace is within you. Will there be trials and tribulations around us? Of course. It's life. It's life is full of choices and decisions. Things happen. Life happens. It's how you handle the situation, how you handle your energy, the power of prayer and energy, the power of meditation and energy. You send your will and intent out to the ethers, and that will change. One prayer will change the ethers. Millions of people will just totally change the ethers altogether as well. So we just have to learn. We just have to learn about all these elements. We're slowly learning. We're slowly developing um, knowledge of how the spirit realm works and just how much of an impact it has. Um, but right now, humanity's focus is to heal and fix themselves. Learn about balance. Learn about that light within them. Rediscovering your birthright, which is your soul. Um, and then discovering your job here on the world. Each one of us is here for a job. Whether it is to be a leader or whether it is to help build something. To help build something. We all have a part in this as a whole. And we will bring that new Jerusalem to this world, the city of peace to this world. And that's going to take unity, acceptance of diversity, and a common goal, which is to help replenish the world again. So, love yourself. Keep shining bright. I'll talk to you all later.